Hey guys, good morning. It's Mike Chen here in Konkan, Thailand. My last day here in the city, or last half day, heading to Bangkok in a few hours. This has been an amazing trip. It's always great when you're able to go to a country, just being able to absorb myself in the local culture has just been nothing short of remarkable. Right now, at a fresh market, we're gonna pick up a bunch of ingredients and then go cook it. This market is also full of street vendors and this lady here, she's selling sticky rice, little grilled sticky rice cakes. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> she cooks it over charcoal so you're tasting all that flame in this cake. Really toasty on the outside, sticky and savory. This is good. This might probably be better with some chili sauce. but. This is still good. Thank you. Thank you. That's a giant bamboo. I think pandas would love this market. So these are spring rolls and they put chili sauce all over it. And it comes with it's like pork, bean sprouts, and noodles inside. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is good. Chase it with some herbs. Mm, this thing. Nice, thin, crunchy skin on the outside. The sprout is nice. The little noodles in here are good. This is a meaty, crunchy spring roll. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember our rule about bananas in Thailand? Whenever you see people selling it, you buy it. This is my first time eating a grilled one. I think I like the fried one better, but this does have a better chew to it. It's still good, not as good as the fried one. Much better than eating a regular banana. Hello. Oh, wow. We're doing our cooking today in Sawati Village, and as soon as I got here, um, they're so welcoming. They just arrived on these motorcycles and sticky rice as a greeting snack. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my god. And that little um, butterfly pea drink. That's phenomenal. All the food items made by them. Oh, cup and cup, thank you. Cup and cup, thank you. This is kile. This is another local vegetable they use. And again, it's just growing, you know, on the side of a road. So, so many of the ingredients we're using today is just sourced as we're walking um, to the kitchen. This is like a little wild berry that you can eat too. I wouldn't suggest it, but you could eat it. Oh, that is sour. Whew. Ah, someone should make this into a challenge food. Thank you, thank you. Cup and cup, thank you, thank you. As soon as I arrived, um, there's people grating coconut, taking the meat out of the coconut. I never saw, look at this method. And then straight from there to the bowl, little sticky rice, a little coconut on top, served on a perfect bowl, half a coconut shell. Hmm. That is wonderful. This is Chef Book, a uh, celebrity chef here in Thailand. You have a TV show here? Yeah, TV show. What's it called? Uh, food Worth. Food Worth. Food Worth. And he travels around Thailand sourcing local ingredients, yeah, so for making you, yeah. dishes. All right, I'm excited. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. So <laughs> yeah, happy to be here with you. you. So they put this in the papaya salad, huh? 
snails in papaya salad. Interesting. We're gonna go source our papaya right now. That's the one we're taking. Yeah. Nice. Bamboo for the bamboo soup is actually low. Right from there. I have never seen bamboo being harvested. And this goes directly into our soup. That's amazing. Oh, I was only a panda right now. And all the tamarind leaf and all the other uh, herbs we just picked along the road went into this chicken soup. Key to this is really not chopping off your own fingers, which I feel like I can manage that. You shred these kind of thin as thin you want as you want your salad to be, and then. Woo! I got this. Beautiful. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. I didn't know. If you want more spicy, at Shimon. It's very spicy. I feel like I am uh, the first ever volcano papaya salad. About ready to eat and you just sit down right on the cot here. Wash your hands. Make it into a ball. You can dip it into the soup, the papaya salad juice. You get a great, I, I don't compliment ginger enough, but the ginger in there is so good. And there's so much spices. Oh, is it spicy? Eat this. <laughs> oh, that is bitter. Yeah, let's not do that again. <laughs> River snails in a papaya salad. Mmm. If you guys never had snails before, it's actually really crunchy. Not slimy at all. And it tastes so clean. I think this is my favorite though. A fish salad. There's a limit of my tie here. Goi ba uh, sep. I just said this is delicious. Dessert? Coconut, Coconut on top. Mm. There's so much sticky rice and so much fresh coconut and use the coconut milk. Oh, this is so good. Especially with that fresh grated coconut on top. Thanks so much for letting me join. Everything is so delicious. It was really a pleasure. Just tasting everything, like literally sourced as we're walking from the road. I've never seen something like that, but what a once in a lifetime experience. Thank you, thank you. Kapunga, thank, thank you so God. much. Thank you, thank you. See you again. See you again, for sure. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Quick lunch before we hit to the airport for Bangkok. I think we're eating a dinosaur. I mean, way smaller than the last one I had. I think it could be better though, quality-wise. Mm. The other one I had at Night Market, it's really good, but it's very distinctively all about the chilies and all about the heat. This one, mm, overall, this flavor is much, much better. Besides the chilies, you can taste some lemongrass, garlic, citrus. There's much more flavor inside the pieces of meat like a ton more flavor. And the meat is much more tender. Mm. Yeah, this is better. This meat is kiss me soft. It really takes no effort to get all the meat from all the little cracks. This dish, one of my favorite things to eat here in Thailand. Squid stir fried with salted egg. Rarely is it ever this gooey and saucy. Usually it's just salted egg kind of like dried on top of something, but this is more of a liquidy salted egg sauce. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. Personally, I love salted egg everything. Oh, you gotta taste this. It's creamy and crumbly and yolky at the same time. The sauce is so thick and it holds on to that delicate calamari. It just brings an amazing richness and saltiness to the dish. You wanna get crazy? Let's get a little crazy. Salted egg on an egg omelet. This is an exceptionally amount of eggs. 
That's a crazy bite I won't soon forget. We're back in Bangkok and uh, dinner, we're gonna go try out some alternative protein dishes. We're gonna go eat some bugs. And we're in this little artistic space called Chang Tre. It's just full of shops and as you can see, artistic displays and restaurants. All right, so I'm sitting here at Insects in the Backyard. Very fitting name. I mean, I've heard about this for many years now, um, about insects restaurants popping up as an alternative and better source of protein. I just never, you know, wanted to go on the frog diet. First dish is cream of mushroom soup. And instead of croutons, we got uh, crispy crickets over here. So I guess these things, we'll, we'll just dive into the soup and eat it that way. It just tastes like something crispy. They don't really like. First of all, I don't. I don't really know what a cricket is supposed to taste like. I mean, Jiminy was never on my uh, must-eat list, but it just tastes like something that's crispy inside my soup. There's nothing too funky about it. It tastes a little burnt, just like a crispy, almost like skin of some sorts. Really doesn't have much of a flavor. It's just more of a textural difference. There's no aftertaste to it. I can't sit here and tell you exactly what a cricket tastes like even after taking a bite, but yeah, like a little crunchy, airy cracker. Really nothing to it. I like the head though. It's crunchier than the rest of the body. Next dish, giant scallops with bamboo caterpillar on top. This thing actually looks pretty yummy. Um, maybe it's because I watched The Lion King one too many times. Well, I see something like this, I think like slimy yet satisfying. I don't know, Simba likes it. How bad could it be? That's actually good. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's the best caterpillar I've ever had. I don't know. It does taste like a, like a lighter, crispier chicharron almost. And it's a giant scallop, perfectly cooked with little bits of onions and green sauce on the bottom. They're super light and airy. It's almost like an uber thin hollow Cheeto. Next up, grilled sea bass with a pile of crispy winged ants on top and ant caviar on the side. I never seen ant caviar before. Throwing me off just a little bit. Tiny little eyeballs looking at me. Insects, they kind of act more like a, like a textural uh, component than a flavor component. Again, these are a little crunchy, crunchy ants on top of a perfectly cooked grilled sea bass. If you don't look down, like you wouldn't even think you're eating insects. You're just like, oh, eating a pretty good piece of grilled fish. There's some little crunchy bits on top. I mean, you're not gonna taste ants. You know what I mean? They're too small. When I was little in China, my mom would buy me these uh, medicinal. How many of you guys have had this before? They come in these little vials of like ant juice. I don't know how they're juicing ants, no clue. But you sip it with like a little tiny straw and it's like really healthy for you. Anyway, that was my first ant experience and then it was the Kim Kardashian ant down in Peru and now this. Final course, silkworms with crepe and ice cream and peach. Now. This is something I've actually had before, these silkworms. All right, when I had it last time, these silkworms tasted horrible. I mean, they just came out of a can. They were all like soaked in this brine and had a funky smell and a funky taste to it. These literally taste like little rice crackers. This dining experience is a, little, is a lot different than all the other insect encounters I've had before. I think here, it, it, it's almost like a, a good way if you want to start trying insects, a good way to kind of migrate into that world because you're really not eating something that's going to taste radically different or completely off. This is a really fun experience. Hey, I just want to give a shout out though to uh, my guys who's been like shuttling me around for the last week, T and Bic. Thank you guys so much for taking me around. You guys are awesome. One, one just joined us today. <laughs> she's, she's, she's joining us for the, the insect meal. Man, you guys are great. Thank you so much. Couldn't, do, couldn't have done this without you. Couldn't have found all the local places. These guys are rock stars. Um, this is our kind of our last official meal together. Um, but big shout out to these guys.
dinner time and I made my way away from the center of the city to, to this night market. And right now I'm at the Hua Mon night market and... <laughs> okay, I, I think I heard about this. So there's this place that it's like a performance by hot guys. So apparently there, there's that, but I, I'm really here for the food. And this is already way less crowded than the last night market I was at. And just walking around, all the vendors are like pretty different from each other. So you're not getting like the same food items over and over again like you would at some other night markets. Walking along, there's so many things to eat here, but it looks like a lot of people are at the seafood stalls uh, eating fish, which I'm about to go eat next because the roasted fish, I need one of those before I leave Thailand. But I was walking by, Peter right there. Peter's, Peter said this place has the best Tom Yum. You should check it out and you, su you should also check out his videos. <laughs> Thanks so much, Peter. So Peter said this place has the best Tom Yum. I'll trust Peter. So I ordered this drink. I have no idea what it is, but when I pointed to it, the lady who works there, she says, Oh, so you know? And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I don't know. But I pretended I knew. And now I know. It's a plum juice. Don't get the secret element to it, but it's tasty. Thank you. This is a big bowl of tom yum soup. And this is the small, 150 baht, so about four or five dollars. And right here by the fin, all this gelatinous meat by the bones. Yeah, this is the stuff you want to concentrate on. Mm. I feel like my internal body temperature just doubled, but God, I feel good. And match with this drink. Ah, that's the secret. Get the tom yum, get this drink. There's literally no English on the menu, so I can't really tell you what this drink is called, but in Chinese, I saw the word rose. I don't think it has any rose in here. Just, just keep pointing until they look really impressed, and that's the drink you should get. I got a whole fish to myself, and they give you some herbs, veggies, and rice noodles to eat it with. Also got some papaya salad. This was one of my favorite food items last time I was here in Thailand. This tilapia roasted with a layer of salt on the outside. And basically, you just lift the skin like so and open up to all this delicious, juicy, tender meat. And I remember this being a dish where... Mm, even just eating it like that, it's so nice. The meat is just some of the most succulent, tender, juicy fish you could ever have. And don't let the salt mislead you. It's not gonna be salt. It just traps the heat in. Look at the juice oozing out of every bit of white tender meat. And then you got the different types of sauce here. This is my favorite, dipping it in some chili sauce. Mm. And throw in a little papaya salad. Wrap that up. I told you, one of my favorite things to eat here in Thailand. And this is so healthy for you too. It's just roasted fish. Probably some of the best you'll ever have. I'm so happy right now. Really for me, no trip to Thailand is complete without eating this dish. Don't forget to eat the fish with little herbs, basil, whatever you want. Just change up the aroma and flavor a little bit. And honestly, like I'm eating the one whole fish by myself, it's not too much. You could do it. It is that good. Lemongrass stuffed inside brings out an extra bit of aroma. Just remember, when you're eating this fish, when you're done with one half, don't flip it over because in Asian custom, that's really bad luck. So just remove the bone. Oh, I think the bottom is even juicier because all the juice from the top sunk to the lower level. Oh my god. The bottom half of the fish is even better than the top half. Seriously guys, I'm pretty much suffering right now. Mouth's on fire. It's so hot outside. But even if that's the case, you know one thing. There's no way you can stop. Until this is annihilated. This week in Thailand has taught me many things. 
Went to a couple cities I never even heard of before. Had my first insect fine dining experience. And I know what Thai people call Jackie Chan, Cheng Long. Guess how I found that out? I feel so bad, yet I feel so good. If your nose is not running, you're not sweaty, your tongue's not on fire, you're doing something wrong in Thailand. I think it's dessert time. Just what I've been looking for, mango and sticky rice. Oh, this is another must have. I'll take one. Thai mangoes are my favorite mangoes in the world. I swear, they're the juiciest, sweetest mangoes ever. I love just putting this in my mouth and pushing up with my tongue and just feel that juice flow over my taste buds. And eat that with sticky rice and coconut milk. It's a one of a kind of experience. Being in Thailand and eating this, this makes me feel so good. You know, like for those few seconds where the mango is melting in my mouth and my senses are kind of overcome by the fragrant coconut aroma. Not a single thought in my mind, not a single worry in the world. This is what good food can do for you. Completely overpowers the senses and overpowers all your stress. Not for long, but take what I can get. I just want to say, although I haven't explored everywhere, I love this night market. It's not overcrowded at all. All the food is extremely affordable. People are super nice. No it just got this really laid back, cozy atmosphere. And there's so much variety when it comes to the food. I gotta head back to the hotel because I got a ton of work to do. But tomorrow, I wanna hit up one more place before I leave Thailand. See you in the morning. Good morning. Like I said last night, one more place I need to eat before I leave the city. My last couple hours in Bangkok, there's a place I really wanted to go before I leave the city. I just heard about it. It combines giant prawns or lobsters and tom yum. Oh, oh, you gotta have that. Ooh, bubble tea. Just from this neighborhood, it seems like this is gonna be a good place. All right, the thing to get here is the tom yum with the giant lobster in there. So 1500 buck, that's like, that's about $30. They don't allow the filming of the prep, which is kind of weird because it's such a Instagram-y, like celeb on the wall kind of place. But I'll let you know if it's worth it. And it's so funny, the tools they gave you to eat this includes a massive spoon, some tongues, and scissors. Look at this. And the depth of the soup is tremendous. Crab with pork, it looks like. Pork and crab meat and egg yolk, fish cakes, little fungus, higher squid, eggs, giant prawns, and of course, loads of rice noodles on the bottom. Now let's see if the flavor is as ginormous as this bowl. The soup is sweeter than the typical tom yum. But it is very, very flavorful. Super spicy, I've been agree, and the flavor definitely soaked into all the ingredients. This is basically like the entire ocean in a bowl. Probably so good. Mixed with pork meat, salted eggs. And I get this is like very Instagram-y, and, and that's probably why most people are here. But this flavor is really not bad. The crab especially, with a nice mix of fatty pork and all the salted eggs in here, kind of balance out the spicy sour flavor. This is a decent meal. And honestly, for that big of a lobster, about 30 bucks, I mean, I don't know how much this big lobster would typically go for in Thailand, but I think it's not a bad deal. And honestly, this will feed two people easily. Mm. My lobster is so sweet. Mm. Buy the lobster. Ah, sip of broth. I feel like this is still my favorite. The crab mixed with pork. There's just so much to love about this. It's almost like a crab dumpling. And when you dig deep on the bottom, you get all that great guts inside of the crab. This for me, this is the best part of the crab right here. The most flavorful part. Oh my God, those are the best. All that roll inside the prime. Chunks of fish in here as well. This is literally the ultimate seafood stew. 
Oh, that fish is the best. That is so tender. Oh, man. That salmon? That salmon was out of this world. Spicy, sour, citrusy flavor as deep as where these sea creatures typically live. That's the best type of seafood stew. And all these massive prawns were lurking beneath the surface. We've got about four of these massive prawns. Big giant lobster, whole entire squid, mussels, fish. As expensive as this is, it's Thai standard, at least to me. It's worth it. Perfect last satisfying meal here in Bangkok. And guys, I really had so much fun on this trip because I did go to places that not a lot of tourists go to, except for this place. I think everyone's a tourist, but I was able to let me see Thailand, to engage with the locals in a way I never had before. So, and the people I met last week are some of the warmest, nicest, most sincere people. And that, along with the great food, was what made this trip truly special and has made this trip one of my favorites. So hopefully you enjoyed this video series. Thank you all so much for watching. Of course, all the places I went to listed down below for you. Until we eat again, see you later.